Peace and blessings, and welcome to another edition of How Now, where we talk about how to live in the now. I'm your host, Kim Martin Raymond, minister, spiritual life coach, author, and founder of Redefining You, where I help my clients to align themselves, mind, body, and spirit. We are heading into 2021. I'm so excited about all the things that are to come that are going to manifest for each and every one of us as we move forward. We had an opportunity to be a part of history in the making back in uh, back on Monday, where we saw Jupiter and Saturn align. And we had a, an opportunity to set our intentions and to move in a new direction. So you know, th- tonight's show is entitled Making the Law of Attraction Work for You, Whether You Believe It or Not. And I believe that that's an integral part of the transformation that we're going to make moving forward and existing in this now. And so as customary on how now, I'd like to give my guest an opportunity to introduce himself because I feel that when you introduce yourself to the world, you're allowing people to see how you authentically see yourself. So with that being said, I'm going to ask my guest to introduce himself. Well, hey, Kim. First of all, thanks so much for having me. My name is Andrew Cap, and uh, I'm a simple man with grand ambitions because I call myself that guy who wrote the last Law of Attraction book you'll ever need to read. So um, you will tell by this conversation, I like to keep things simple, easy, and user-friendly, but I also go all in in everything that I do, and I hope that our conversation will inspire many people listening right now to do the same. So thanks again for having me. I'm really pumped to be here. Absolutely. I am so glad that you are here. And as you said, you are a number one selling author of your book, The Last Law of Attraction book you'll ever need to read. And I had an opportunity to to, uh, start reading the book and it is wonderful. It's fascinating. Uh, It is an easy read, just like you said, it's user friendly. And um, before we dive into that, I like to talk a little bit about what you were doing prior to the pandemic with regards to uh, this law of attraction and what has been a little bit of your experience since then? Yeah, you know, it, it's so interesting because <clears throat> even though I've studied law of attraction for probably 16 or 17 years now, mm-hmm. I didn't write this book until mid 2019. So right before the pandemic, I was just gearing up with this book and I was gonna make a go of it no matter what. And mm-hmm. it was really interesting because when the pandemic hit, Obviously, some people have different life situations where it's easier automatically for them to adjust. I just made a decision like, okay, well, something's telling me to be indoors for a year. So I'm going to roll with it and I'm just going to focus even more into this endeavor. I'm going to build up a YouTube channel a little bit quicker. I'm going to put the book out there. I'm going to go on podcast interviews. I'm going to post on Facebook more and give basically just do whatever I can to give more value and lean more in. So um, I cut out the socializing and I cut in the extra work and I made sure that it was fun while I was doing it. So I just kind of rolled with a punch, which I believe is a great way to go about things and chose to find opportunity in where the pandemic was putting me because it puts everyone in their own different way or they respond their own way. I was just going in harmony with where my direction and where I was going anyway. I love that. I love that you say harmony because that's a big thing for me because sometimes it's not a matter of things being uh, balanced. It's not a matter of some things, you know, going one way or the other. It is harmony and it is figuring out how to, to have things flow in more of a fluid manner than in a black and white, you know, when we're living in this gray society. So like you said, yes. you were talking about, you know, starting this book and, and, and moving things out and creating that platform, which is wonderful because that's what we're doing with, with this How Now podcast as well. You know, creating uh, opportunities for people to adjust and to figure out how to, you know, make a go of, of what's happening right now. So tell me a little bit about, you know, a turning point, a pivotal point in your life where you saw this law of attraction really start to come into fruition for you. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. And I, I learned about it so many years ago. And I, 
<laughs> I learned about it as an entrepreneur. I think a lot of entrepreneurs out there and even a lot of salespeople, they can really relate to the idea of having to kill your own dinner, so to speak. You know, when there's not a reliable paycheck, you've just, you got to make it work. And you find yourself going into all these different modalities of positive thinking. And law of attraction was just one of them. And when I first learned about it, I had my own successes and failures and um, it was very inconsistent for me. Mm -hmm. And what I later discovered is it wasn't inconsistent. I was inconsistent. Mm -hmm. I was not doing what I should have done because every time I embraced these principles and worked with them and did simple visualization techniques or gratitude techniques, I would start to see results before, again, something in me stopped me from doing it and then it fell back down. But the profound thing that kind of came about was in about, I think, 2008, where I lost my first business and a three-year relationship all in the same week. Wow. And, you know, everyone, again, they've got their own perspective. For me, that's like 90% of my life in three days. That's what kind of happened there. And I kind of hit this wall where I'm like, listen, something needs to change. I'm not getting any younger. I got to do something here. Let me think, oh, well, this law of attraction thing kind of worked whenever I actually did it. And I'm feeling really bad right now. So I got to this very stubborn, indignant place where I didn't care what happens, when it happens, why it happens, how it happens. I didn't care, but I put all that to the side. I said, listen, I'm going to go all in with this once and for all. And when I say all in, I don't mean all day, every day, because I understood human nature right. and knew that I wouldn't hold that up. I meant five or 10 minutes every single day. But this time I actually stuck to it. And I'll tell you, Kim, the results that I enjoyed were miraculous because like within two weeks, I felt better, which is saying a lot with, with you know, a broken heart, right. really a lot. Within, within three months, I'm in a brand new healthy relationship, way healthier relationship, and I'm over my ex. Within four months, I'm making more money than at any point in my life before then. And within six months, everything's different. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm waking up happy and fulfilled. And, you know, obviously I, I got up off the couch and I did things, but the one thing that I did consistently that was different was I just did these methods, these very easy user-friendly methods, just a few minutes a day, every single day without fail. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, that that kind of brings me to, to my next question, which kind of uh, piggybacks off of that. You know, you talk about consistency because just like with anything, you know, we, we hear about things, just like you said, law of attraction isn't something that's new. It's not something that, you know, is, is uh, you know, something that we look at and say, oh, you know, well, you know, we'll try it. it it's a fad. It's, it's been around. It's been consistent in, in a backdoor kind of way. And, mm -hmm. and we just kind of pick it up and use it when, when we feel it's convenient. But does law of attraction really work for people who just believe in it or do they, or does it work for just anybody? So, you know, it's really interesting. First of all, you, you know, I couldn't agree more. It, it's kind of become this fad where people kind of like been there, done that, listen to it, which in many ways obviously um, prevents people from going all in. But, but to answer your question better, I, I always like to explain it like in physical terms where I use the example of lifting weights to get muscles. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do, Kim, is I'm going to give you two possible explanations of how that really works. Uh -huh. So explanation number one is you lift weights. And then when you go to sleep at night, the muscle fairy comes and gives you muscles. Poof, magic, you're all good. <laughs> explanation number two is when you are lifting weights, you're putting so much stress on your body that the muscles are literally tearing under the stress of that weight. And then your body responds by healing, by feeling in those little micro gaps with more muscle fiber. Now, I butchered that explanation, but I'm sure a lot of people listening right now would say, Andrew, it's the second one. And what I would say is, it actually doesn't matter which one it is. What matters is you lift weights, you get muscles. You put an X, you get Y. And whether or not you believe in the law of attraction or believe in the universe or believe that there's a vibration or there's energy or anything like that, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. If you do simple gratitude or visualization methods, you will see results that, hey, if you can't explain them, fine. If you don't want to credit the universe, fine. If you don't want to credit the law of attraction, fine. But the results are going to speak for themselves. So for me, I just try to get people to do this. And again, they don't even have to buy the book. They can go my YouTube channel for free. I just try to get people in a place where they can do this because the book and me is never going to teach them. It's that life experience of seeing the result happen that's going to teach them, that's going to change them. Because once someone has experienced a new result, they could never go back even if they wanted to. Wow. See, and that, that's good. That's what we need to do. And, and just like you said, we're, we're in an information age. And even though the information is there, 
you know, we, we feel hard pressed to, to actually dig and actually do the work. You know, we're, we're so, you know, inclined to ask somebody else or to, to rely on someone else to bring the answer or the solution for us. We don't want to do the work. But mm. what are some of the things that, that we can do as far as mindset to help us to get out of that? Because I think that being in a space of, of learning and growing and, and getting into um, some habits and some, you know, things that are going to, to help us to sustain are going to make us better for the right. world. Well, well, Kim, here's where I, I may walk away with your award for most long-winded answer ever, but let's see if I can, can cut this down because this is actually a really key piece that I mentioned in my book. And once people understand this, they, they are golden. So the way I describe it is, you know, we have three minds. We've got the conscious mind and we've got the subconscious mind. And right in the middle, we have what I define as the ego. Mm -hmm. Ego have different definitions, but I define the ego in this way. And obviously, um, you know, the ego is stronger than the conscious mind, but the subconscious is stronger than everything. But that ego is still kind of in there in the mix because the ego, as I define it, only has one job in this world, and that's to keep you alive. And all the ego knows right now is in this moment with those money problems that you might have or the relationship problems or the career problems or the job problems or even the health problems, all the ego knows is right now you are alive. Mm -hmm. And the last thing it wants to do is risk the status quo by changing things up. So you may want to get rich and famous, but for all the ego knows is that you being famous will lead to stalkers, which is a threat to your survival. Mm. All the ego knows is you getting all that money, all of a sudden distant relatives are going to come out of the woodwork and try to take it all from you. Another threat to your survival. So the ego's like, listen, I love you. I'm actually looking out for you. I'm just misguided, but I don't care about your comfort, your satisfaction, your, your fulfillment or your happiness. I'm going to keep you stuck in place. And this is why people struggle so much to do these methods on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But with that first part of the long-winded answer out of the way to get a shorter person here to address what people can do, the key is rather than trying to fight that uphill battle of trying to force yourself through it, like I did just because I was frustrated enough that I became stubborn right. is you want to find a method or technique or more than one that you enjoy so much that it isn't a chore. It's a choice. It isn't something that you have to do. It's something that you get to do. It's something that you look forward to. And it's only five minutes a day. When you can accomplish that, you take the heavy lifting out of the equation and you do a method that bypasses the ego to the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And then all the things start to fall into place for you from there. Ah, see, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, and, and it wasn't that long winded an answer. It was it was actually a very thorough one. So I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, for those of us who need things to be broken down a little bit. And 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 you're right, it's it's definitely an ego thing that that keeps us in that space, you know, in that survivor mode, you know, because that, that's what's going to, like you said, keep us in in, in a space of, of feeling safe. And you know, sometimes you know, it's, it's not, it can be a misguided form of safety. It's not really what we're looking at. We're looking to, to, you know, like you said, do those things that we enjoy. And I think that, that you make a, a, a very good point because I think about weight loss and I think about people who are trying to go on diets. It's, it's, it's gotta be something that you want to do. It has to be something that you desire to do, not just someone telling you that it's the best thing to do. So you talk about different techniques and you talk about those techniques in your book. And, um, I love the scripting and talking about that and whether you can write things down or whether you can say them. And as I was looking at the book, I was reading it and saying, hey, you know, I'm more that, you know, I like to repeat things because I'm one of those people who talk to myself all throughout the day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say I'm crazy or anything like that, but I do. I talk to myself. I talk myself through things. I, 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 I'm a process kind of person. And so, you know, talk to me a little bit about some of the uh, ways in which people can uh, practice this law of attraction uh, through some of the methods that you have. Yeah, well, first of all, kudos to you. If you talk to yourself all good, me, when I walk around the block, I'll just hold a phone up to my ear. It's not <laughs> on. I'm just talking to myself. But um, so <laughs> the whole thing is, you know, the whole, the, the point of like what I try to deliver in the book specifically is I like to give people variety because it is my obviously biased opinion that any method on its own is enough. But every person's different because some person might like a gratitude method 
or some person might like scripting, which is just journaling about your life in the present tense as if you're living your dream life or a classic you know, visualization. Um, if I may, I, I'd love to teach your audience one of my favorite methods that's worked really? best for me. And uh, this is a gratitude one that I call this the time-lapse method. And mm -hmm. it's pretty simple. You're gonna write down 15 things that you're grateful for. Five of them are things from your past, five of them are things from your present and five are things that you want in the future. But the real catch about this is you're going to word all of them in the present tense, where if you read them to somebody, they wouldn't know if it's something that's on the way or that it was in the past or that's here already. They won't be able to tell. And what you're going to do is you're going to write these 15 things down and then you're going to jumble up the list. So maybe the first thing on the list is a present followed by a future and then a present and then the past. You don't even know. Now, here's where it gets really interesting, because when you think about it, two thirds of that list is real. It is either happening right now or it has already happened. So if you go through this list and you read off one thing at a time and you give yourself maybe 20 to 60 seconds to bask in the gratitude of that thing, yeah. two thirds of that list, there is a certainty and a confidence and appreciation that you can't manufacture because it's real. But because we as human beings psychologically can't downshift easily, that same certainty and enthusiasm is going to carry over when you're reading the future things that you want mm -hmm. in the present tense. So it's another way, again, if you let's not even believe in the universe, let's not believe in energy, let's just talk about our powerful subconscious mind, which is a supercomputer. You're basically programming your subconscious mind with that same level of certainty, excitement, enthusiasm with those future items as you are with the past and present. And the best part is, even if I'm lying to you or I'm deluded and this doesn't actually lead to results, uh -huh. the method in and of itself, the moment that you're feeling this gratitude is good for your health because it reduces stress, it reduces anxiety, it helps with sleep. Like there's been studies about what gratitude can really do for you. Yeah. So it's basically a win-win no matter what, even if you don't see the results right away. That's right, that's right. I love that. I love that concept. And of course, because it requires us to exist in the now. Yes. <laughs> you know, all about the now. I love that that that's what it does. It 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 teaches us to be present. It teaches us to to really focus in on those things that are happening right now. And that that there is no really segmented time and space in which those things can occur. They're all happening simultaneously. So I love that that you have that exercise and that it creates that space. It cre creates that space of living in the present. So that is something that just is mind blowing to me. I like that, the time lapse method. I love that, I love that. And what I also wanna talk about is just, again, there are just so many people out there who are so, you know, I guess, eh, I, I just, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that, you know, if I just, if I think it, it just, it can just happen. That's that, mm -hmm. you know, there's no such thing as magic. There's no such thing as this, you know, celestial vending machine. And I could just pull it down and, and grab all the things that I need out of it. And so to the naysayers, you know, what, what is something that you would say to them? Um, I would advise that they continue to not believe me because I don't want because I don't want them to have an uphill battle where they're doing this because they, they doubt. But I would suggest is do this with the understanding that it's not going to work, but the method in and of itself is fun. Do it with the understanding that when you do these methods and, you know, I, I can teach another one if, if you want, but when you do these methods, it's a departure from what's normally a stressful day. It's a departure from rushing to work and being stuck in traffic, although we haven't really had that problem this year, but it's a departure from all the stresses and anxieties and things like that. It's an excuse to kind of like relax and think and, and feel positively because again, even if this doesn't work, the method in and of itself is the real value here. And by the way, for people that do believe in this and they're like, well, how come it doesn't work even though I believe in it? Wow. You kind of touched on this before. You said there's a power to the present part a lot of people do these methods because they want the result. They're doing the method to get the result, which like, duh, of course, why wouldn't you do that? That's what all the books say. But there's a, a hidden little cheat code in there. What you really want to do is you want to do the methods 
to enjoy the methods. It's about enjoying the now moment. You can't force the universe to do it. If you're doing this to get the universe to give you something, you're basically putting out the intention, or if you don't believe in that, your subconscious mind programming, that you don't have the thing. You're reinforcing not having it. Mm. Whereas if you just enjoy it for the sake of enjoying it, and again, if you don't believe in law of attraction, cool, but thinking about things that you want or things that you have and feeling appreciation is just fun and healthy. So mm -hmm. there is no law, there's, there's nothing you can lose. And by the way, I just gave this to everyone for free. They didn't buy my book. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you don't even have like money to lose in this deal. All you do is right. get to try this and you do five minutes. Once you feel good, that'll be your indicator to do the next day and the day after that. And then the day after that. Awesome. And there's no right or wrong way to do it. Right. Right. Thank you for asking, because that's another thing that our ego tells us, right? Because our ego's like, listen, if if Kim gets rich and famous, I am worried about her. What can I tell her to stop her from doing this? I know I'll tell her that she has to be sitting in a perfectly silent room. She has to be facing the east. She has to have the north to at an angle. She needs to have a dog on one side and a cat on another side. Right. I'm going to make up all these things about how it's going to be right. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It's like the ego will like. I, the stories I could tell you about the things that the ego fed to me back when I was buying into it, it because again, it, it loves you and it's scared for you, but you're right. There's no road there. As long as you feel good right. while you're thinking about what you have or what you want or both, you're doing it right. There's no other thing that you have to worry about. Yeah, that's beautiful. And that's something I think that's important when we, when we set our intentions that we're sure that our ego doesn't get in the way of, of that and, and sabotage us because we have a lot of people out there who are self self saboteurs you know yes. they they you know put the things out there or they tell someone and then you know that person comes in and now it kind of changes the dynamic so how important is it uh with regards to the law of attraction for people to focus on themselves and not necessarily sharing it with others if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah. So the, the ultimate answer, in my opinion, to that is what makes you feel better or worse? Meaning like me personally, at least in the past, I feel a little bolder now. I feel emboldened. So it's different now. But in the past, if I would share something really bold and ambitious with somebody, all of a sudden there'd be an artificial pressure there, which would create resistance. So it wouldn't be a good thing for me. Just by the way, where deadlines or specific times work for certain people, it doesn't personally work for me because then it's again, it's an external pressure where maybe the universe wants another month to give me something even better. Mm -hmm. So if there's someone out there that they can, that can tell someone and they feel comfortable and more empowered and more confident, do it. But most people, I mean, there's nothing wrong with speaking it into being, but do it in the privacy of your own home because you might not want the pressure of now having to live up to that person's expectation because then you've made it about them and not you. And then all of a sudden your focus and your intention is skewed and distorted. And it's like, it's not even about the, the job that you want or the boyfriend or the girlfriend. It's about your friend not thinking that you're silly. And that's a whole recipe for disaster. Right, right, right. I want to make sure that we put that out there because yeah, it's important that we don't, you know, focus on what other people think or, you know, and, and we're in that mode of self-care. And, you know, we had a, a, a week, a, a self-love week, a couple of weeks back <laughs> where, you know, people were being encouraged to do some things for themselves. And so, you know, I just really think it's important for us to, to, you know, take that time to be reflective and to really, you know, set those intentions and to, to know that there's no, you know, set and structured way of doing things. And that's with a lot of things, but to, you know, really capture what's happening right now so that we don't drift off into different areas. And like you said, go against the natural flow of what the universe is putting out there. Yeah. And there's um, a real, yeah, it's a real gift in this, by the way, Kim, because like, you know, again, I'm not a fitness expert, but I know there's a possible way to work out wrong where you injure yourself it's impossible with this stuff. You can't do it wrong as long as you feel good. It's impossible. That's the beauty of it. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell me a little bit about your, um, about your YouTube channel. What are mm. some of the things that you typically share with uh, your listenership? 
Yeah, so the YouTube channel is really this fun, interesting thing where I'm, I'm breaking all the rules. Like sometimes I'm interviewing like law of attraction experts and sometimes I'm making five minute videos. And this week I just uploaded a, a new meditation. The whole point is it's really in support of the book in terms of the, it's the same content. If I come up with a new method that I think is fun, I'll put it on the YouTube channel. And by the way, you know, right now, obviously, I am in a um, value delivery mode and just want to answer questions and give your audience as much bang for their buck as possible. Mm -hmm. But because I have the gift of editing and doing all different things, I inject a lot of humor into the channel just because I think sometimes it's a fun, easy way to drive home a certain point that I want it to be memorable for the for the audience, for the mm -hmm. viewer. So YouTube channel is just my fun extra outlet in addition to the book for people that either bought the book and want to learn more methods or people that just aren't book readers, even though there's like an audiobook and they just want another way to consume this information and gain from it. I figured if I'm really into this and I really believe in it, let me put out free content as well. And that's the real motivator behind that. Awesome. Yeah. And people love free. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I could be the cheapest person on the planet. Trust me. I'm just like, well, get a little something. But, you know, it, but definitely you, you add value and you bring content that you know, it's going to help people to, to get from that space. My big thing is always removing from a space of fear and uncertainty into a space of learning and then hopefully into a space of growth. And yes. that's what you're doing with your, with your book and with your platforms. And I hope that I'm doing the same with this podcast. We're, we're creating spaces for people to grow and to flourish and to, you know, live an abundant life. And I think that a lot of us, have seen and have, have experienced abundance in this pandemic. And people yes. are saying, how in the world? This has been the worst year ever. We've been hearing that, and I'm sure you have heard it. And I'm sure that you've gotten comments from your listeners and say, you know, this has been the worst year. How can, you know, how can anything good come out of this? How can anything productive come out of this space? Because there's so many negative things happening. What can we do to continue to shift their mindsets from mm. this? Well, the thing is, certain people, I, I'm not going to argue with, with certain people in terms of things have been difficult. I think, you know, if someone not to go down too negative a road, if, if someone lost a loved one, that's mm -hmm. a difficulty thing. You know, there are things that may, or if, if they've lost their job, they've lost their business. Although I would argue that one thing you might want to do in response is to do what you can to focus on gratitude because it opens doors. I'm yeah. not going to argue that it isn't a hard time. I will say, however, that there are certain people that say it's been difficult when it hasn't necessarily been for, for them or doesn't necessarily have to be because, you know, now could have been that perfect moment for you to start that YouTube channel or write that book or begin that business or use this as an excuse to go on Zoom and connect with family members that you haven't spoken to in a long time. There've been a lot of opportunities in the midst of all the chaos and confusion and uncertainty to create something better for yourself. And by the way, it's not too late. Just to disclose we're starting a new year and we don't, I, you know, I view this year as, um this is going to be like the rubber band snap. I kind of feel like a lot of happening in 2020 was like this rubber band being pulled back and there's going to be a, a point. I don't know if it's January or March or who knows where things are going to snap back and it's going to be amazing abundance. But before that happens or after it happens, whatever's going on, everyone still has opportunity to make something um, of this productive or positive and, and find a victory in this and find a gift. And really, if nothing else, taking time for themselves to feel gratitude for five minutes a day, there's a lot of advantage and benefit to be had in this experience. Yeah. They just want to be a little more creative and willing to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wise words from a wise man. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about, you have a, um, a website. Mm -hmm. Is it a website or is it a, that uh, tell us about your business? It's called oh goodness, I'm Awesome Marvelous. Yeah, so <laughs> my company is called Awesome Marvelous Inc. That I figured it's uh, you know it's a nice, funny sounding thing, and it's really interesting because you know you can find my YouTube channel just by going like searching for Andrew Cap. Uh -huh. But I, if I remember right, I don't think I turned it off. If you go to awesomemarvelous.com, it also auto forwards to YouTube because I'm yeah. so into the YouTube right now. But um, believe it or not, like that company had been set up to do a lot of different things, a lot of different possibilities. But I got so caught up in the enthusiasm of this project in particular yeah. that like 98% of what I'm doing through that company right now is just the book or related to the book or the YouTube channel. Awesome. Awesome. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Marvelous, right? <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. Marvelous. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much. 
thank you so much, Andrew, for, for coming and talking about the last Law of Attraction book you'll ever need to read and giving us a little bit more of an insight into what Law of Attraction is and how it can benefit us even when we don't believe in it. And um, you know, I hope that people will continue to uh, follow your YouTube channel, get a copy of your book, and to start putting into practice those things that are going to help them to move forward now and uh, moving into 2021. So as I ask all of my guests uh, towards the end of each show, tell me something that you do personally to live in the now. Mm. Well, first of all, just to use some of this time to say thank you so much for having me. Um, part of living in the now is having gratitude in the moment for everything that's valid. And I love the name of your show mm -hmm. and I love the intent behind it. So um, kudos to any audience member who's found you so far because it's clear that they're looking to do better things and I'm glad they found you. So um, with that in mind, that gratitude that I just expressed, um, one thing that I really do to keep in the now is my daily habit because I like to say that I take my own medicine and I do my own methods and I do. But the one thing I do that I don't even mention in the book every single day to stay in the now is I have an ongoing habit with a friend of mine across the country where we send each other a message over our phones of gratitude, whatever we're grateful for that day. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is there's a social pressure built into that because even if it wasn't fun, which it is, we kind of feel obligated to not let the other one down. So we're always like, sometimes he's first, sometimes I'm first, sometimes when he's first, um, I'll comment on his stuff and it'll inspire me in my message to him. It's a lot of fun, but I stay in the now by making sure I maintain that habit of gratitude with a good friend who's happy to keep up that habit with me. Yes, and, she, and that's wonderful because gratitude is definitely something that we need going into the holiday season, going into the possible uptick in this uh, pandemic right now. You know, just trying to, to find that space of peace is what's going to help us. And, um, you know, there's no better way to do that than to, you know, tap into ourselves, tap into the energies that are around us. And I think those are going to be the things that are going to spark us to continue to, you know, be on that path of being our greater selves. And I think that's what it's all about. So again, thank you. Is there any last words that you want to leave with our guests and also some contact ways that they can get in contact with you? Sure, thank you. I'll, I'll keep the contact part easy. If, if you're interested in the book, um, the website lastlawofattractionbook.com will auto forward to Amazon. You can check all the formats, tube.com slash Andrew Cap. Um, but the last thing I lead is, you know, this stuff, I mean, whether you believe in it or not, it works and, you know, even meeting people like you, this is one part of this intent that I set before where I'm meeting awesome, positive people. Like when you engage in this process and you try to give value in your own way, you're gonna run into some really amazing people and you're gonna have some really amazing life experiences even in the midst of a global pandemic. So everyone out there, whether you're having an easy time or not so easy time, I would advise you to in any way, shape or form that you can engage in a, in a process of positivity whether you believe in law of attraction or not, because you will see a result that you won't be able to argue with and you'll love your life all the more for it. Yes, yes. Like I said, wise words from a wise man. Thank you so much again, Andrew, for joining me on this episode of How Now, where we talk about how to live in the now. And again, I am. it's been a blessing to have an opportunity to meet you and to, to talk with you about your book and all of the wonderful things that you're doing. I wish you the best in 2021 and moving forward. And I know that this will not be the last time that we'll speak. And I'm sure that I'll have you back on again as we continue to move through and navigate through this space that we call life. So thank that you, being Kim. said, yes, you're, you're welcome. Like I said, a pleasure. I'd like to thank, thank you, you all again for joining me on this episode of How Now, where we talk about how to live in the now. And until the next time we meet, I say peace.